10 secrets Drake is hiding from fans. Hello viewers, welcome back to Flex Offenders. It's funny how people don't want to sweep the issue of Drake having a secret child under the carpet. He's already made it public in his album Scorpion that he has a son called Adonis. Drake is extra conscious of his fame. He avoids making silly mistakes to preserve his image and therefore tries to hold back some secrets. Fans can judge you, and Drake is well aware of that. So, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you have it. Also, comment hiding and we will choose one person from the comments for a shout out in the next video. 10. He's a good skater. You're used to seeing him rap on tour, release a new track, appear in interviews, and trend for merely supporting a football or basketball team. Drake hails from Canada, and it shouldn't come as a surprise that he is a pretty talented skater. When he's not on a flight, on a bus, or in the studio, the rapper is probably skating. If he hadn't joined music, Drake would be an established actor, or maybe in the national team. He once took Rihanna for ice skating on a friendly date. The stars party at the Basement Bowl Club in Miami, where they flirted, bowled, and danced all night. But being the expert that he is, Drake took Rihanna ice skating, and he was perfect. The singer and actress was very impressed. He also does his thing on roller skates and sometimes slams into the ground as every skater does sometimes. The rapper was shooting his music video for Nice For What, which teaches women to appreciate themselves. While on the wheels, he lost control and took a crazy tumble. He posted it on IG so he could get the first laugh, and thousands of them followed. At least we know Drake can do it more than us. I'm just wondering, can he do skateboarding like his mentor, Lil Wayne? 9. Drake Tried Stealing Rihanna's Spotlight Wondering why Rihanna never got into a much serious relationship with Drake? Perhaps Drake was doing everything wrong and disappointing the pretty lady. The rapper went beyond public with Riri, leading up to the 2016 MTV Video Music Awards. She's someone I've been in love with since I was 22 years old. And even went as far as renting a billboard gushing over her. During the ceremony, when the two were on the podium, Drake, who was wearing a tuxedo, gave a fawning speech about Riri effectively making her moment his, and for once, Rihanna didn't see a gentleman in the tuxedo. Even though Rihanna contained herself at the time, she opened up how uncomfortable it was for her. The VMAs is such a fan-focused awards show, so having that energy around me and knowing the people who had received the awards in the past made it feel like a big deal. The singer and actress told Vogue, Wading through the speech was probably the most uncomfortable part. I don't like too many compliments. I don't like to be put on blast she added. Rihanna was also sure to mention that she was no longer friends with Drizzy, but there was no bad blood either. You at least know where Drake went wrong and helplessly watched a Saudi businessman, Hassan Jamal, take his dream girl. 8. He faced anti-Semitic attacks for being the only black Jew Drake's religious and racial background is unique. His father is African-American Catholic, hailing from Memphis, while his mom is Jewish and Canadian. To some Jews, it's almost abnormal for being Jew and black at the same time. Which reminds me, the Ethiopian Jews in Israel are black, right? Well, back in Canada, it made less sense, and the rapper faced anti-Semitism as a child and a teenager for being the only black Jew. The rapper studied at Vaughan Road Academy in Toronto, and it wasn't the easiest school to attend. Drake got bullied so constantly that he temporarily dropped out of school. However, he graduated in October 2012. Despite the fame, Drake is still the Jew he was when growing up. He posts photos of Passover and Hanukkah gatherings on his Instagram. He told Rolling Stones that he celebrates holidays with his family. In 2017, he threw a bar mitzvah-themed birthday party. And his 2012 song, HYFR, has a video that's purported to be re-bar mitzvah, where Drake prays and raps in a Miami synagogue. Say hell yeah, hell yeah. Wondering why Drake chose to be a Jew rather than a Catholic? Well, he lived with his mother. That's where the influence came from. 7. The rapper is bigger than the Beatles Drake will never tell you that he's bigger than the Fab Four, but he is in terms of single sales. Since Drake became famous in 2009, he has had his songs rank on Billboard Top 100 every day until August 2017. In fact, it's after 2017 that his songs didn't feature on the charts for the first time. The Fab Four only managed to have five singles rank on the top 10 chart. Drake managed to have seven singles appear there at once. I mean, it was only three songs that were not his. That wasn't his only record, though. 
he broke another one, which he was the previous holder, for having the most songs in the Billboard Hot 100s chart. Drake managed to have 27 songs out of the 100 tracks. That too, the Beatles never lived to see. And not even Taylor Swift can break the record. Drake has seen all the songs from one album on the charts. You can call it a blessing, but Drake knows it's all about making good music. 6. He has the business thought Drake was ranked the fifth richest rapper in the world by Forbes, with a net worth of $150 million. He was also the youngest on the list, with 10 years. Music is not his only source of income. The rapper has several businesses on the sides, earning him a fortune. Just in November 2019, the rapper partnered with Canopy Growth to become a proud owner of More Life Growth Corporation, named after his 2017 mixtape. Drake has a 60% stake in the company, and it will be responsible for producing and distributing cannabis in Toronto and around. His clothing line, Ovo, is doing well. The business sells cotton and jersey t-shirts and hoodies with the October's very own Golden Owl logo. He co-owns the label with Oliver Khatib and Noah Shabib. The rapper also launched a line of warm, pricey Canadian goose coats and hats in 2016. In the same year, Drake opened a strip light club named The Ballet in Houston, Texas. With all those businesses, he doesn't have to worry about falling back in fame. Drake has a backup plan, something most rappers don't. 5. He was yelled at at Camp Vlognaw set On November 10th, Drake was yelled at and he was forced to cut the set. Contrary to what the media was reporting, he was not booed at. Drake was brought out as a surprise guest at Tyler, the Creators Camp Gnaw Festival. But the fans were expecting to see Frank Ocean. Drake called the experience a moment of humility, which is always welcomed, to hide the fact that he felt terrible. The rapper told DJ Akademix that that wasn't his night, and he wasn't the one the festival goers wanted to see. So why did the crowd respond so badly to one of the most popular rappers? According to the fans who were there, the headlines depicted a completely different story. The fans were crazy about seeing Frank Ocean perform, and they had high expectations that he would turn up. Tyler even hinted that Frank would attend and also played Frank Ocean's new song. ASAP, Rocky and Lil Yeezy Vert came out and played two songs each. When Drake came next, people were responsive and excited. Drake asked to play more songs, and the fans accepted. After he performed them, there was a sudden confrontation of people wanting Drake on stage and others asking for Frank Ocean. Then a random girl yelled, Frank is in New York! And all hell broke loose. Drake would want to forget that experience. 4. He loves Harry Potter You heard that right. Drake is a Harry Potter diehard. He is so in love with the franchise that he searched for the first edition of Harry Potter in the Sorcerer's Stone. In 2017, during an interview with Billboard, the rapper revealed that he found the edition on the market going for $160,000. And he thought, since his birthday was around the corner, it would be a good idea to buy it and treat himself. In another interview with Hollywood Reporter, Drake mentioned buying the edition. The rapper was speaking about his plans to focus on films and TV projects, but got excited when he started talking about his obsession with J.K. Rowling novels. It's pretty cool to think that Drake is such a big fan. He never stops to amaze us. 3. Drake uses bad language Drake loves basketball. That's a no-brainer, and he can get really personal. He's often accused of being a sports fan with potty mouth to boot. In 2018, Drake went to see his favorite team, Toronto Raptors, play the Cleveland Cavaliers, and he was quite a mess in the courtside. It was reported that Drake approached Kendrick Perkins, the Cavaliers' center, during halftime and screamed some obscenities at him, probably to ruin his mood. The exchange was so heated that other Cavaliers players had to hold the rapper back to prevent a physical fight. The Toronto Sun reported that Drake is a notorious distractor behind the Raptors' bench, and even Masai Yachuri, who is the Raptors' president, said that he would talk to Drake about his conduct. The rapper received an official warning from the NBA for his use of foul language. 2. He's best friends with Kanye West Drake and Kanye have publicly feuded sometimes, but behind the scenes, they are true friends and work together. You probably don't know that it's Ye who directed Drake's debut hit, Best I Ever Had. The video was shot at Bishop Ford Central High School in Brooklyn. Drake was in the studio with Big Sean recording a song when Kanye had a brilliant idea of the video. That's when he ended up directing the video. It was his idea. 
Before releasing Jesus' King album, Kanye revealed in an interview that he had left his new number at Drake's house because he could not serve God without settling the beef with fellow artists. Kanye's beef with Drake escalated when Pusha T dissed Drake for keeping his son a secret. According to Drake, Pusha T found out from Kanye after hearing Drake's song about his son. The, the, the details of, of his record are all just like fabricated, so yeah. just to make it more interesting. Yeah. The story is actually not really that interesting. The biggest part of it is that I have a son. But it wasn't like, oh, I'm hiding him or... A song that was never released. Pusha T claimed it was Drake's close associate, Noah Shabib, that leaked the information to him. Drake was so furious that he threatened to destroy Kanye. But his producer convinced him not to. One, he is generous. Drizzy gives back to the community. He donated thousands of dollars for Hurricane Harvey relief efforts and gave $50,000 to a University of Miami student to help him pay for his tuition. A reference video of him giving back to his fans is of his song, God's Plan. The rapper puts smiles on Miami residents, giving out thousands of dollars to help out schools, students, shelters, and even a local supermarket. The video was shot in Miami in the aftermath of the hurricane. Drake has done some philanthropic work over the years. His first donation was $30,000 to a Jamaican learning center to help them set up computer schools. In September 2013, he joined forces with the game to help a mother in Ohio who lost her five kids and boyfriend into fire. However, his biggest donations were after he released God's Plan, after being away for the better part of 2017. The single hit the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100, and the single broke both Spotify and Apple Music's single-day streaming record. So to make the video of the song, he decided to give out. The song has over 1 billion views on YouTube. 